Hi guys, so last night I promised on Instagram that I would do a get ready with me Q&A where I get ready, put my makeup on, do my hair and also answer your questions. To be honest, I woke up this morning and I forgot I got ready, I didn't film it. <laughs> but you guys did actually send me quite a few questions and I didn't want to just completely ignore them. So instead I thought, since it's a chill Saturday, I would continue knitting this scarf that I'm making for my friend Jess and answer your questions whilst I knit instead. I'm just gonna get started on this row before I get into the first question. I have not done the best job in the world with this scarf. Um, it's because it's thinner wool than I've used in the past, so I find it's just easier to make little mistakes or get confused whether I want a pearl row or a knit row, so I kind of, <laughs> like if you're a knitter, you're just gonna be like, oh Jean. So I've made some mistakes, but basically my intention is I'm gonna turn it into a pattern and it's absolutely fine because I'm not undoing the whole thing. Okay, so now that knitting is underway, the first question is, will writing your PhD, what keeps you motivated to keep reading and researching? Oh, motivation, the elusive, <laughs> um, ever desired feeling. Do you know what? I don't always feel motivated. Uh, there's various things that keep me literally doing my PhD. One of them is that, you know, well, I've started it now. I'm more than halfway through. If I give up and fail, it's going to be really irritating, which equally goes for sometimes I have deadlines. And if I have a deadline, you just got to keep working. I don't rely on feeling motivated or feeling inspired. I just got to sit down and do it because I know somebody is expecting me to hand something in. Like there's no choice because otherwise, again, I fail. Um, outside of that though, because there's not tons of deadlines in a PhD and it is something that requires a lot of self-discipline, is that I think actually discipline is more important than motivation. It's about, regardless of how you're feeling, just saying, today I have to do this. And often I find my motivation when I'm researching. So I might not feel motivated to start doing anything that day, I might not be feeling in the right mood to like continue on with my PhD, but once I've started, once I've read some articles, once I've done a little bit of writing, that's when I get inspired and that's when I start feeling motivated because it reminds me of how much I genuinely care about this topic and love what I'm researching. And at the end of the day, if I didn't love it, I probably wouldn't feel motivated to do it. So love of my subject um, and simply just, you know, sitting down cracking on regardless of how I feel is how I stay motivated. But it would be a lie to say that I am constantly on it, you know, sometimes I feel overwhelmed, sometimes I feel behind, some days I don't do anything, like, let's not idealise the situation. <laughs> I'm also part-time, which I think makes things a little bit easier time-wise in terms of feeling worried about finishing the PhD, although it does also mean that my time is split between my PhD and working. So, you know, I have to balance that. The next question is, where's your favorite place to read? And this one is a pretty easy one. It is in my bed. I realize you can't really see what I'm doing, but if you know, I'm doing a wee pearl stitch, pearl stitch. Um, this is not a knitting tutorial by any means. <laughs> Someone else asked, have you ever considered writing your own book? If so, what would it be about? Oh, so many times. I've wanted to be an author since I was about seven years old. It is one of my primary career goals and life goals. I love writing and I have consistently written on and off since I was seven. You know, sometimes life's been hectic and I haven't been writing for a few months and that's fine. Um, but you know, I, I usually have something on the go. At the moment, I am working on a fantasy novel, like a big epic fantasy novel that I'm more than halfway through. I've written about 47,000 words of. Uh, so, well, maybe halfway through. It depends how long it ends up being, but in the scheme of the plot, I'm more than halfway through. But fantasy can obviously be quite long. And it's about dragons, and it has two women as the central like romance. And yeah, it basically has all of my favorite elements of fantasy. Like what else would I write? Uh, <laughs> so I am writing that, and I hope once I've written it to go back and redraft it, and then maybe, you know, one day in the future find an agent for that or a publisher for that. It's something that I don't see myself finishing this year though, especially not the second draft. However, I also really want to write non-fiction. I have a paper that's, go I do have an article that's going to be in an edited volume that's coming out from Bloomsbury in 2021 that I'm helping to edit, which is an academic volume. So that's an academic paper based on some of my research. I've also been working on a like accessible non-fiction book based in 
ancient history and classical mythology that I have been pitching to agents. I haven't got an agent yet, but you know, I'm trying. But I certainly can't complain because there's the very strong possibility that there might be something on a bookshelf in the next few years that has my name on it, but I can't say any more than that at the moment. Someone else asked, how did you decide to do your PhD? Like, I don't remember ever <laughs> going through the thought process. I kind of always wanted to do a PhD since I learned what they were. I always wanted to go to university, I loved learning, enjoyed the learning when I got there and I saw continuing with university and continuing studying as my ideal option. I certainly doubted that decision, not whilst I was doing the PhD, but like, you know, I had those moments when I was graduating my undergrad or my master's, particularly my undergrad thinking, oh, should I be doing something else? A lot of my friends are going into more straightforward or lucrative careers. Should I do a law conversion? Should I uh, work in another industry? Uh, but obviously I stuck with the PhD and I've, I've never regretted it. Someone else asked, who do you think should be the next prime minister? Well, like, Jeremy Corbyn. I think if you follow me on Twitter, you know I want Jeremy Corbyn to be the next Prime Minister and come the next general election, I will be out there campaigning for him. Um, if you're looking for a more interesting answer, like not somebody that's actually already trying to be Prime Minister. Um, a female politician I really like is Laura Pidcock. I think she'd probably be a very good Prime Minister. Somebody that's not a politician. I really like Owen Jones. I could see him as Prime Minister. I doubt he ever would stand, but you know, I, I, like he is in the right sphere of politics for me. Although I'm looking at the question now and it was actually, who would you pick to be the next Prime Minister or like President of the World? And I'm just gonna put it there that I think the idea of President of the World is terrible. Doesn't matter who it is, even Jeremy Corbyn, I don't think there should be a president of the world. <laughs> Next up is what are your favourite biographies? I actually have a video of my favourite autobiographies and memoirs if you haven't seen it, so I'll link that down below um, to rattle off some off the top of my head. Asata by Asata Shakur is excellent. Um, that's what I can remember right now. Gender Games by Joe Dawson. I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings by Maya Angelou. The Art of Asking by Amanda Palmer. Those are a few anyway that I would recommend, but I will link the video down below. And that completes one row of pearls on my wonky scarf, no judgment. Um, <laughs> now on to knitting. Um, we then have a question to recommend my favorite classics. Another one where I have a top 10 video. So I'm just gonna link it down below and move on to questions that I haven't really dealt with in the past. Somebody else asked what job prospects are you aiming to do with your classics degree? Um, it's, a, it's a great question. Uh, well, I've already outlined that I really want to write. I really want to write non-fiction, I want to write fiction. I want to bring classics to a wider audience. Like, I want to be a scholar and I want to conduct academic research, but I don't want to work exclusively in the world of academia. I want to expand outside of academia um, and create things that mean other people can access this subject that I feel so passionately about, which is one of the reasons that I started my podcast, That's Ancient History, which I love and I always so very much enjoy your feedback on. It's always so reassuring, so thank you for that. But just whatever I do, I want it to include that. <laughs> I then have, what are the most satisfying books you've read? Take satisfying however you want. Immediately when I think of satisfying, I think of happy endings, to be honest, I guess, where like I feel like the characters get what they deserve, but in a good way. I'm far more interested in like things working out for the good characters, that is like what I enjoy. So a wee romance is nice when they like, you know, fall in love and it all works out perfectly. In fact, do you know what some of the most satisfying books to read are? Jane Austen. Jane Austen's books are so satisfying. Something about the writing, the period, the relationships, the kind of ups and downs. Jane Austen, very satisfying. I also find Sherlock Holmes incredibly satisfying because of the way the mysteries are solved at the end. Like, I wouldn't say I generally find thrillers and detective novels altogether satisfying, but Sherlock Holmes is satisfying. Again, maybe it's just because it's a classic and it's the way it reads, which I find quite comforting, but also the fact that Sherlock Holmes always does this thing at the end where you get this big long spiel where he uncovers the mystery and how he solved it and then the background of the characters and why they did what they did and I always really enjoy that. Sorry, I just got a WhatsApp message. <laughs> then I got asked, do you have any go-to happy songs? Uh, everything by George Ezra makes me happy. I love George Ezra. Um, the Kinks, everything by The Kinks, again, pretty much makes me happy. Or The Monkeys, they're just so upbeat and fun. I would say those are like my go-to happy songs. Uh, what's the book you recommend the most 
Depends, but um, I know I constantly gift people Daphnis and Chloe by Longus because it's my favourite classic, my favourite ancient book, one of my favourite books, and I just want it to get more attention than it already does. But I do want to do a video which is books I constantly recommend or books I recommend the most, so look out for that. Again, what's up? <laughs> this one was interesting. Favourite class at university? Ooh, oh. Well, no, hands down, it was Athenian Law and Economy. Um, I studied that in my last year of my under... Oh no, that, that's not true. Okay, it's a tie between Athenian Law and Economy, which was one of my top two favourite classes and definitely my favourite class in my final year, and the Ancient Novel, which was um, the year before. The Ancient Novel pretty much inspired my undergrad dissertation topic and Athenian Law and Economy inspired my master's dissertation topic. So I had to have loved them for the have had to like seeped into my research so much. Loved both of those classes so 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 much. Oh, I would just go back and sit in on those classes again. They were so so good. Quite a few people have asked about what I plan on doing with my PhD and with life but I think I've kind of answered that. Favourite of food? I love so much food. I love veggie haggis, I love pizza, I love iron brew which is a drink but whatever. Um, I love donuts, I love raspberries, bananas, bananas are brilliant. Does anyone actually have a favourite food? I think we just say stuff, but nobody wants to eat only one thing. So those are some of my favourite foods. Someone else asked how my novel writing is going, which I kind of addressed there at the beginning because I think I have mentioned that I am working on this fantasy novel and it's such a passion project in the sense that like, you know, I want it to be out there in the world one day. That would be lovely because I'd love to share it with people, but I'm not writing it as a job, like I don't see it as like a deadline of something that I have to finish because it's going to be judged and I have to earn money from it. It's just something I really enjoy so in that way I find it quite relaxing and I'm somebody that gets a bit caught up in deadlines in finishing things and something I've been talking about with my counsellor is uh, <laughs> the anxiety that I induce in myself or well, the way my anxiety makes me behave and my novel is something that doesn't cause me anxiety because I don't feel like it needs to be finished. I just continue cracking on with it and one of the things I've been doing recently is because I hit a little bit of a like dead end, not a dead end, what's the word, but just like a, a difficult moment in the plot which I was finding difficult to unravel some of the things I'd set up or bring them together and in order to work through that one of the things I've been doing is writing a short story which is set at the university, which is one of the central locations of the book, when our protagonist is no longer at the university. So she's gone somewhere else in the narrative of the book, and uh, while she's away, her friends have gotten up to some stuff at the university. So I've kind of been writing about what they're doing. I don't know if that would ever end up in the final book, but it's been really nice kind of exploring what goes on when she's not there and developing those characters and just keeping myself in the world. So I would recommend doing that if you're ever stuck on what you're writing. I just, I've really enjoyed that and my friend Jill reads every chapter as I write it, which is so wonderful. She has been there since the beginning reading every single chapter. She's like, keeps me going because she wants to know what happens next and it's so flattering that she wants to know what's happening next. So thank you, Jill. Doubt she's watching this, but thank you. Someone else asked, have you loved classics since you were a child um, or did you fall in love later? Um, I would say since I was a child, it like is a gradual thing that seeped in, but I was always drawn to it. I don't remember the initial thing that got me into classics, but I can think of so many parts of my childhood that did revolve around antiquity. My dad used to take me to museums all the time, everywhere, and that was such an honour. Like, what a special thing to have as a childhood. Like parents encouraged you intellectually. So he was constantly taking me to museums. We would watch documentaries together, particularly on ancient Egypt. I think a lot of people get this, but I loved ancient Egypt as a child, even though that's not what I study now. And then I would get all these books by DK, which were their eyewitness books. And I would always pick up the ones like DK eyewitness pyramids, DK eyewitness Romans, Greeks, whatever. Like I either picked up the ancient history books or I picked up the books on religion. Never Christianity, I guess maybe because like I was more familiar with Christianity from school and um, from having family that were Christian, but I loved reading about other religions. I'm not religious, religious myself and I wasn't raised religious, neither of my parents were. 
Um, but I was really interested in those kind of things. So I guess like mythology, theology, history, and particularly the older stuff. So yeah, I always was drawn to it. I loved reading Asterix and Obelix, which was a comic book series set in um, antiquity. I loved watching Xena Warrior Princess, which was a TV show set in antiquity. Uh, Disney's Hercules was always a favourite. And as I got a bit older, I really enjoyed watching Time Team, which made me more interested in archaeology. But you know, I can't think of a time when that wasn't really one of my interests. So yeah, as a child. And there I have finished the knit and I'm going to put it down for a minute because I'm really hot and genuinely I think the knitting and the talking is making me sweatier. But for that reason I'm going to answer one last question which is when did you know you wanted to be a classicist? I didn't know what classics was when I was a child or a teenager or even really heading into my young adulthood because nobody ever told me what classics was. You know, I went to pretty bog standard state school, like classics is not commonly taught in state schools. I knew I liked ancient history and archaeology because Time Team had told me what archaeology was and I, I knew I liked mythology and things like that and I, I liked going to my classes in history and I liked going to my religious education classes and just, you know, mesh, mushing all that together in my brain. But we never actually tackled antiquity at school ever in any of my classes, whether it be um, religious education, whether it, it be um, uh, English, whether it be history. Never did antiquity, so it was always an outside interest. But because of that, and I knew you could do history at university, because my dad had done history at university, I thought, I want to do ancient history. And I remember vividly going to the open day at Edinburgh University, which is where I wanted to go because my dad had gone there and I was from Edinburgh and it had a good reputation. So I always planned on going there. And I went up to the history department's table where they were like sitting to talk to potential students. And I went, I'd really like to study ancient history. And they're like, this is the wrong department. You need to go to the classics department. And I was like, don't know what that is, but cool. And I went to the table with the woman, it was a woman sitting behind it, um, who was chatting with potential students about classics. <laughs> and that was literally the first time I had ever heard of classics, like ever. And um, I did then do um, a classical studies degree. I started off doing ancient history and classical archeology. span All of that's kind of irrelevant, but it was within the classics department, which was in the humanities department, but it was separate to the history department. So as I think this video is made very clear, I've always had an interest in ancient history and classics. I didn't always know what that was or what that would uh, lead to, but I just pursued it because I was interested in it and I just kept learning about it. And here I am, past halfway in a PhD, which is pretty good. I've got an ancient history podcast. One day, hopefully I'll write ancient history books. You know what, I feel like I'm on the right path for me, so that's good. But that covers most of the questions that you guys asked me. Um, and I've made a little bit of progress on Jess's scarf, thank goodness, because I know it's hot just now, but winter will come and it needs to be done. So <laughs> um, I hope you enjoyed this little chatty video. Until next time, happy reading, and I'll see you all again soon. Bye guys.